Hello everyone, this is Parzival630 here, and uh, this is a post-recording of part one of Pokemon uh, Shiny Gold X. Um, <laughs> so the reason why this is being post-recorded is because I lost the original audio for this series up until I think like part four of this um, the, of the recording session when I finally figured out what the heck was going on. So basically what had happened is um, the connection to wire to my controller was um, not connected properly and when I tried to fix it at the beginning of the re this part right here it didn't um, take and it unplugged my toner microphone. So essentially I am dealing with just uh, a lot of post recording and everything which uh, you know I'll take. It's fine. I'm not complaining about it in heavy detail or anything. So, um, this first part is basically just going to give us an overview of, like, what Shiny Gold X is. And, excuse me, um, the overview of what the premise of, I guess, how I'm going to be playing this playthrough Basically, I'm just going to be using Pokemon that I want and who I want to train and everything. And I'm going to be switching out Pokemon and members and everything like in the old days when we used to play Pokemon games to begin with. And essentially setting, set, settling on a team for um, like the, the Elite Four. This game is huge, so I'm not going to be surprised that I'm going to end up having like a bunch of level 50 Pokemon by the end of this. Uh, right away, we do see that um, in the in your personal computer, the item that you can withdraw from the item storage unit is the with uh, link cable, which is very useful for evolving Pokemon that evolve through trade. Seeing that this is a Pokemon ROM hack, and a lot of the Pokemon that evolve via trade are not able to fully evolve, this kind of gets around that problem. There are other items that are m more so used as evolutionary items in this game. Uh, I can cover that those when we get around to it. And I forget that it, I forgot that it snowed at the beginning of this uh, uh, playthrough. Uh, the weather in this game is kind of random and it's kind of annoying. Uh, it's one of the things that I have the biggest complaint about. But uh, you won't hear me actually complaining a whole lot about it, except in a few spots where. I'm supposed to be grinding or training or whatever and or trying to get to another place and turns are getting wasted because the sun's too bright or it's raining and it's just wasteful text that just gets in the way of gameplay in general and I'm sitting here explaining the premise of like Professor Elm and like his whatever so I'm so I'm kind of glad that you don't have to hear what I had to say about this because it's kind of annoying. I basically came to a conclusion why I felt justified to pick Totodile at the beginning of this because a long time ago I picked Squirtle for my first playthrough of Pokemon Blue and that's recorded on a different channel if you want I can pop it down in the description down below. It's yeah it's really interesting and then I stupidly name him Croco with all caps which is stupid in and of itself. I really can't believe that like uh, everyone else in the game you can see that it's all capital with lowercase letters. It sh I should have matched the text a little bit better. I'll fix it when we get the golden rod though so we don't have to worry about that. I think the big problem that we will see later on in this playthrough is the fact that a lot of trainers that you run into actually use potions a lot and they will waste turns and waste your time and there is a an extremely bad habit of Pokemon hanging on with 1 HP and then being healed back to almost full health. And a lot of Pokemon bosses in this game too will have annoying hold items like Citrus Berries that will, you know, early on Citrus Berries will basically heal a Pokemon back almost to full health and then you're left to the grind all over again. I think one of the <clears throat> more um, interesting things looking back at this recording now and like how I started this playthrough is the fact that I mainly wanted to get Totodile up to a certain level so that he can learn Rage 
because it's super important that we learn that move early on. Especially with how difficult the game can be off the bat. And right here we're going to see uh, our first instance of a rival trainer, trainer battle here. She's going to have a, a bag on, which is level 5, and starts off with the move Leer. And oddly enough, this trainer fight is one of the easiest. It basically almost gives you the fight. Uh, it, you know, basically hands over the fight on a silver platter. All this Pokemon knows is Leer. Which, at this point, I do believe it should know either tack Tackle or en Ember. I'm not really certain which one it should know. Uh, but you'll find that a lot of earlier fights in the game, especially Pokemon, will have moves that they don't normally have to make the fight more difficult. Uh, I'll explain that at the end of this video, too, because there is another trainer fight that we get into towards the end here. Um... We got lucky here and actually ended up gaining two levels because of the Pidgey that we and that I encountered at the beginning of or right before this fight, and that's where I got the two damage from, which is hilarious. the The Bagon does not deal any damage at all, but uh, I still had two damage at th at the end of that fight. And then we saw like the Dragon Tamer, Lore Keeper, or whatever the hell she is, uh, push the trainer off to the side. Um, there is a random chance that the legendary dogs who appear here at the beginning of the game will drop an item. I got one of the rarest um, instances where all three of them drop an item. There is also a chance that they all can drop the stat boosting item of their stat on each one. I ended up getting the um, Mystic Water here, which was dropped by Suicune. The in I do believe that Suicune can also drop a berry of its own. I can't remember which one it is. But, um, we got lucky there and we ended up with the Mystic Water. And the fact that Entei and Raikou also dropped their respective, uh, uh, respective items on their own was, uh, was amazing. But the other thing that I also want to point out is that without those berries at the initial there, we do not have access to the berry pouch until we remove the berry from Totodile at the beginning of the game because each starter will start off with an Oran berry at the beginning of every playthrough and you can choose to take it off if you wish. I took it off here. I don't know why I did. I think my intention was to immediately put on the Mystic Water which there's no reason why you should until your Pokemon actually learns a water type move or the, the move that complements its stat boosting move, but I do believe I do do that here in the next couple of fights. And as you can see in this um, this ROM hack here, a lot of Pokemon that don't normally appear on this route are appearing here, like Wormpole. Um, I think there was a Taylor that we saw earlier that appeared and almost killed us. Actually, that was the reason why I stopped the heal and took the Oran Berry from it. I do end up using that Oran Berry, I do believe, a little bit later on here. Just kind of like an extra healing item for me to have to use beyond on another Pokemon. I do believe I actually end up using it on the Totodile, though. Um, so I, I am kind of talking about like the patches of dirt that are seen on the route there and the... Um, the addition of the fruit bearing trees that you see in the like on each route. So the fruit bearing trees are the ones that were originally in gold and s silver and they were re-added to this fire red hack. A lot of the time the Oran berries will um, will spawn there. A lot of ones that don't have spawning materials are turned into abricorns later on in the game. There is a chance in each pile of dirt though that an item may appear there and it takes the place of a hidden item somewhere hidden somewhere else in the game too or maybe it was just added i'm not certain the development team who put this game together did an excellent job on it there's a lot of cleanup that needs to be done in this obviously but there's also a lot of um good things that they've done i've been following this rom hack since the early days of it and was super excited when they originally brought it out back before Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver were released. 
Um, so here we see that the old man did his tour and he gives us the town map. I take the town map here mainly and did the tour mainly because I want to point out like a lot of things that have changed from game to game and um, ROM hack version, like the version of versions that have changed throughout. I do take the time to heal here as well. Oh boy. Um, so, the date of recording, the original recording for this was, I do believe, uh, Tuesday, February 21st, or 20th, I mean, 2024, and the date of this recording, the post recording, is uh, three days later, uh, February 23rd, 24th. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because it was uh, bright, sunny, and warm out, and now it is 23 degrees and <laughs> snowing. So a lot happens around this part of the Midwest this time of year, but nothing has quite been as wild and random as this year. <laughs> this year has especially been kind of frightening as far as how little snow that we've gotten. I did talk with my spouse the other day, and they seem to say that the seem to think that the snow is not going to last past Monday because we're supposed to get like weather up into the like low 50s, mid 50s, somewhere in there. So we're going to warm up pretty bit again, and then go back to wearing shorts outside, which you know is not normal for February, but whatever. Uh, I am checking every fruit bearing tree that I can early on here, mainly because it's good to have berries that you could attach to Pokemon, especially in gym battles and everything. This guy gives you a free berry. I don't know if he's on the clock system like he was in Gold and Silver. Might be worth a check again later once we get a chance to. Um, the <laughs> Again, we went in and I don't think it was raining out and then we came out the door again and it suddenly starts raining. Again, the weather in this game is super random. It could be raining once while you enter a door, and then it could be sunny the next. Or it could be snowing. I think once or twice I have also run into a sandstorm that just kind of blows by, too. Um, though not in this later version of the ROM hack. I do believe that that has been kind of omitted from the random weather occurrences that kind of happen throughout the game. And can only appear in certain areas from now on. I'm not certain, but the weird ash snowstorm that happens in the Hoenn games does occasionally appear here. It has no effect on the internal gameplay or the po random Pokemon battles at all. It's just an effect of the scenery that occurs. And every once in a while I do notice that the rare Diamond Dust weather pattern does appear every once in a while. I don't think I caught it in recording at all though because it we do spend an awful lot of time outside training and going um, from route to route trying to catch Pokemon and things like that later on. And I don't see that as a... I don't see a random weather patterns like that too often. The one that really bothers me the most is the hail and the... Um, well, hail, which it really doesn't occur too often that I've noticed yet, but when that does occur, it, it is one of the more annoying weather patterns that you can get while encountering and training Pokemon. Uh, I do spend an awful lot of time grinding in these games as well. As well. Um, and I suppose I should be talking about what's on the screen here. Uh, looks like we just got the mystery egg from Mr. Pokemon, and now Professor Oak is trying to con us into completing his Pokedex for us, for him. Um, so he's going to put a b bunch of work on us and task us with catching every Pokemon in the entire fucking Pokemon world. Uh, and trying to high sell it as a high-tech encyclopedia like we all don't have cell phones at this point. Uh, sorry, Oak. Phones are a thing now. You cannot con me into your underpaid Pokemon research that you barely have funding for yourself. I also believe that in this game you do get your little short rest healing thing that you do when um, training with, or not training, when staying with Mr. Pokemon. I think your Pokemon do get healed here 
uh, I wasn't really paying attention, so I don't really know. Uh, we do not get a phone option in this game. You get a Pokemon beeper that gives you messages about what each player and which NPC is telling you throughout the adventure. Especially when Elm beeps you and it's a whole story of things. Like, a beeper can't do that much, but okay. They had to find a way around, like, the whole Pokegear problem in this game. Mainly because they couldn't just program a Pokegear that easily. I'm not certain if other version of, versions of this game actually have the Pokegear finally programmed into it. This is the second to last version of the game that I have played. I've played a Sigma X version of this game that's a little bit older than this, but I didn't like the difficulty spike at the beginning of the game for that for my tastes and for what my playthrough wants to um my playthrough needs means to an end, I guess you can call it. Um again, as I said at the beginning of this video, this game is huge. Um I think there are at least Four regions in this game and a lot to explore and a lot of things to do this is basically like adventure red if you haven't played that rom hack i highly recommend it it's one of the best retellings of a story that doesn't need to be retold in such high fashion but it actually is and if you actually play it like word for word you actually get a lot of like key story points i in my opinion it's a lot better than ash gray when here we finally encounter our, our rival Silver, which we named at the beginning of the game. And this Chikorita that he steals actually has um, uh, Stun Spore which, and Double Team, which Chikorita cannot learn at all. And by the time we fight him again, he will have neither of those moves anymore. This is basically just a programming of making the initial fights that much harder. I do believe they give a little bit more experience than they normally do. And I find it really funny that this damn Chikorita uses Double Team twice on me. And then decides um, to, like, growl and leer. This Pokemon's move stat, or move pool is literally leer, growl, stun spore, and Double Team. This thing is only programmed to annoy the ever-loving shit out of you. And I find that hilarious because he goes down just the same. There's no difference in how he's... Uh, how he goes down, or how he faints, or anything at all. You're given some pretty decent experience for that fight, even though you cannot catch Pokemon up up to this point because Pokeballs are not available. But you do get a pretty decent chunk of experience for your starter Pokemon. Um, I will say that in later versions of like the like the heart uh, the Heart and Gold remakes for the DS, uh, Pokeballs do become available almost ava uh, almost immediately when you enter Cherry Grove Town and the uh, possibility of like Nuzlocke rules or whatever, your ability to catch Pokemon in general just kind of goes up. I do not believe you can catch Pokemon though until after the Pokemon guy gives you your tutorial because he does pull you to, to the side as soon as you get Pokeballs here. And here we go back to uh, New Bark Town here to explain to the police who we just saw. And this dude, this cop is just... Apparently he was a young male with long hair. What? You battle a little traitor like that? How? What? Did you get his name? And it's just really super annoying because literally Elm knows based on like what he saw that a Pokemon was stolen and he could have seen who this was. And yet we are the ones who explain the appearance of this trainer. And here we are showing Elm the stupid mystery egg that will eventually evolve into Togepi, or hatch into Togepi. That's just incredible! Oh, oh, oh my god! It's a superb Pokemon, it's a recognized Pokemon potential. Therefore, you must be, be have the potential to become champion! And it's just like a whole bunch of, like, judging of character based on, like, another person's judgment of character. It's like, oh, he must see the potential in you. You should take the gym challenge. It's like, dude, like, what if I want to do, like, Pokemon contests or go to the th go to theater school? Like, you can't tell me what to do. And yet, our main goal here is to challenge every gym in the game. Now, I personally recommend that you go back home here because 
you do not get to save money in this game like you do in the other versions, like Gold and Silver, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver. What you do get from your mom is one of the three amulet coins that you can find in the game. And the fact that you get this so early on in the game is an absolute godsend. It doubles all uh, currency that you win from Pokemon fights. Um, as long as the Pokemon holding it comes out to battle at least once. Super useful, super handy. Um, I use it in almost every fight that I enter, which is definitely necessary considering the fact that I lose an awful lot in the, in the coming parts. Um, but we do end up catching like a couple of friends along the way. I think one on each route here, kind of Nuzlocke style, but I do look for the Pokemon that I want for my team. And it's not this motherfucker right here because I hate Wurmple and I hate its evolutions. They're fucking annoying. And they're only necessary in the Hoenn games if you want to defeat Brawly early on. And almost immediately, because especially if you're able to catch a Dust Ox. This is the Pokemon that I was looking for. Um, and I'm super surprised that I found it right away. Because Ralt is super rare in any, any other game. And he is... Ralt is pretty much rare in these games. I think he only has about a 4-5% to 5 chance of appearing in Route 1. Or in the initial route. I, this is like what? Route... 114 or something like that. I can't remember what it is. Uh, wait, no, this isn't like the hundreds. It's like route... I think it's like route 19, route 20, something like that. Anyway. Um, the... Um, we do have to whittle him down a little bit to be able to catch him. I was half tempted to catch him in a timer ball, but I do end up hanging on to this timer ball for quite a while. I think as of this recording, I still have it in my inventory. So, I haven't used it yet, um, and this is probably about three, four episodes down the road. So, pretty lucky that he's not, um, it hasn't been used yet. I do use a couple of premier balls and the like for other Pokemon, I believe. So, you get some randomness to the types of balls that I'm using, trying to catch and expand my party here. Oh, oh God, quit, quit yawning. Um, I do name this Ralts Lloyd, like the um, intended spelling for the original Mother Games. The uh, Rom Dump English translation of the um, of Mother One uh, spells Lloyd's name with an I instead of a Y, which I always find funny. But he's still spelled his name is still spelled with two L's in the um, in the English. I don't no, I don't believe. I think he's only spelt using the Rwanji um, with one um, Ru sound. I do believe. I'm not 100% certain on that. I do believe... Yes, I do give Ralts the amulet coin here because he's definitely deserving of it. He will be one of the Pokemon that ends up at the front of the party a lot. And he becomes basically one of the main hitters of this playthrough. I do give him an Orenberry, which... At least gets me to Cherry Grove. Um, I do explain here that I did initially thought, think about wanting to catch a Pokemon in, on Route 23 there, but I do not. Um, I think it's 23. Is it 23 or 24? Um, anyway, it yeah, it's the route back from Blackthorn City back to Newark Town. 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 Um, yeah, we make it back to the. Back to Cherry Grove here. Oh, boy. Mm. Uh, I do talk an awful lot about, and I, you'll hear me make jokes in the actual, like, updated recording of this, where I'm actually cord recording as I'm playing about the Wigglytuff that's behind the counter at the Pokemon Center and her creepy eyes. I, it's probably one of the most noticeable things that I, like, I recognized when I first played it. Um, I do believe I did do a little bit of shopping before I moved on. I, yeah, because I have potions and, uh, antidotes on me. <clears throat> and those, oh, yeah, I'm checking the natures and abilities of my Pokemon now. Um, which, I do believe Void is a, um, he's... He's a neutral nature. 
And Tortodal's main stat boost, I do believe, is going to be a special attack. Which, okay. I'll take it, I guess. Um, and so we're just going to head up and start looking for Pokemon that we want to have on our team. I do believe I catch another Pokemon on this route, but I do not... I do not... Uh, yeah, I do I do catch a Pokemon on, on the route north here, which I, as of right now, is still on my team, but I'm not planning on having long-term. I think, like, one of the main things that I've noticed here is my switcheroo tactic for this is not really entirely necessary, but definitely something, like, where I feel... Like, if I hadn't done it, I would have made a bad choice in knocking routes out early on. Because Spiro's a pretty much a hard hitter, especially early on. And the fact that the developers of this round hack gave Joey a Spiro instead of a Rattata is super awe-striking to me. Because Joey's known for his Rattata, you know? Um, and it's kind of weird not having him with it. This is, like, the first time that a Joey is... In a Gen 2 version, and he doesn't have it. I don't know. I don't think I'm comfortable with it entirely. And then, of course, Mikey, the guy who uh, beat Joey early on. And there goes my controller again. My controller disconnected super early on in the recording, which gets cut out. And that was the whole reason why my... Um... My recording died out for the audio. Uh, I did mention that earlier, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much I'm going to talk about other things right now. So I'm just kind of watching and seeing what happens. This Rattata, which is female, by the way, which is kind of neat, um, is level 7. And I guess they're just kind of highlighting or underlying whatever, like, the reason why... Mikey was the stronger trainer because this Pidgey is also level 7. It's like, I have two Pokemon, and they're way stronger than your stupid Spearow. Um, I don't know. I think these early routes basically do highlight a really glaring problem that I have with early Pokemon routes. And it's the higher level Pokemon wins the battles. And it is highlighted in this fight here, mainly because I am just tanking hits here and healing and um, basically building up my attack bar. Whoever has more moves, again, Pidgey has Leer here, don't know why, super annoying, but here we are, these battles are harder. And if I hadn't knocked this Pidgey out and it, was, it would hang on in red HP, it, Mikey probably would have healed that Pokemon, which... I've kind of pointed out and alluded to earlier, but as we'll see, especially on some of the more later routes, mid-game, after, especially right before the first gym, heading towards the, uh, the third town here, um, and that, um, and that playtime area, we'll start to see potions and other types of items being used here. Um, one of the weird things is, is that a lot of the gym trainers actually use X items, which I think that they should be using more of, in my opinion, mainly because there isn't enough showcasing of what those items do in the games. I remember in, like, Red and Blue, the showcasing of even, like, um, Direct Hit and, uh, what's the other one? Um, Guard Special are um, they're kind of very rare, I guess. I do remember like in Koga's gym and in Giovanni's gym in red and blue, especially playing like the old Game Boy versions, the like still not knowing exactly what they do, which I do believe direct hit boosts your critical hit ratio to two, or at least it's supposed to. In red and blue, that's not the case. It's um it actually drops your critical hit ratio down to one. And I do believe guard special is... It 
shrouds your Pokemon in a mist, so basically it clears all status changes and um, debuffs from the Pokemon and starts them at zero again, which I think is kind of cool. It, it, you waste a turn having your Pokemon out by using a move like that, and then you... But instead of switching the Pokemon out and starting the their stats back at zero... Er, at neutral, you're actually keeping the Pokemon out and starting them at neutral instead. Kind of a nifty move. Kind of a nifty move to have, like Mist and... What is the other one? There's Mist and... It's not Smog. What is the other one? There's another, There was another move in, in Red and Blue that shrouded your Pokemon in Mist. I can't remember what it is, though. Uh, I'm going to think of it after this recording, or I'm going to look it up and I'm going to be so mad at myself that I didn't think of it, because it is just awe-inspiring that at one point I knew every single move in Gen 1, and I'm flipping, blanking out on one particular move, which I guess I will say, too, like, there have been a lot of changes and a lot of moves that have been omitted from the canon Pokemon games from here on out, I guess, and or just outright changed. I know like moves like Bite have changed types, mainly because Bite is now considered a dark type move along with Crunch, but even Karate Chop went from a normal type move to a fighting type move from Gen 1 to Gen 2, and Gust became a flying type move, and Pidgey actually start off with Tackle instead of just Gust, which makes a lot more sense, I guess. But even though Pidgey is known in his Pokédex entries to have the move Gust already, I don't know. Um, I don't write these games, and there's a reason why, because I would just dump a whole bunch of logic into it and make the game even worse. Kind of like the quirkiness and the whimsy of the Pokémon games is the fact that a lot of Pokédex entries are over-exaggerated and basically, like, unintentionally creepy. Especially, like, a lot of Ghost-type Pokémon. A lot of Ghost-type Pokémon just are creepy in general. But then there's a ton of regular Pokemon that are just outright creepy as well. I think one of the things that I will do, and I do a little bit here, is kind of point out the and read the Pokemon entries. And you'll see here that the because I was playing so late in the day, the game decided that at a certain point the sun was going to go down. So it's getting dark out now. I think that's really cool. And was a mechanic that was introduced back in... Gen 2 with the internal clock, but now it's kind of a main staple in this game, and it does pretty much follow your internal clock on your PC, so it's... I like when games do that, mostly because it puts more of an emphasis on what Pokemon you can find during the day, though that's not really the case in this version. It's kind of annoying why it even gets dark in the first place, because you could find Huthud anywhere. Anytime during the day, on any route that it appears on, no matter what time of day it is. I ran into one training uh, my Pokemon for the first gym, and it was, like, middle of the morning. So, I don't know why there's a 24-hour clock system here. It's kind of strange if you ask me. I do believe I am preparing to, like, sign off here. I'm running probably about a minute until the end of the episode here so i am just going to do my initial like sign off stuff here in a minute and kind of end things off here so that we don't run over time or anything because the recording should stop at around the time that the video ends so i guess if you like what you see here and for whatever reason don't mind the ongoing rambling of parsable 630 here be sure to leave a like and subscribe but you know i'm not gonna hold you to it just wanted to make that little weird little glowy thing happen when you ever say subscribe on the in a video now which is funny to me but anyway this is partial 630 and i will see you guys in the next one take care everyone